Tacked Off Destiny is the most beautiful disappointment of this anime season. When the first episode dropped and showcased its classical music-themed battle waifus, everyone came flooding into this series expecting big things. But now that we're halfway through with the series release, there's not much that has happened to meet these expectations. Don't get me wrong, the art here is gorgeous, the designs are bright and creative, the characters each have their unique personalities and charm to them, and obviously the music and sound are amazing. As a co-production between Studio Madhouse and MAPPA, this is by no means a bad bad quality anime. But what's lacking in Tactop Destiny is in its plot progression and narrative interest. Aesthetics can, and often do, play an important role in the narrative. Music and art direction used properly together can convey plot elements without dialogue or actions. What a character feels doesn't need to be expressed in words if you can achieve the same goal through artistic symbolism. But that being said, we're halfway through with Tactop Destiny, and I can't help but feel like nothing has happened past the initial setup of the premise. And on top of that, everyone eating up the this series seems convinced the show is deeper than it actually is. The first episode of Tactop Destiny gives us a vague version of the backstory before becoming a pretty standard yet well-executed introduction, which also represents a typical episode of the series. After the appearance of mysterious powerful gems, the world was invaded by beast-like creatures known as the D2. While seemingly attracted to the gems, a few disasters have revealed that they also hate and attack musical melodies, resulting in a taboo on music. The premise is kind of similar to the movie Acquired place, where sound instantly attracts monsters that destroy everything. But with the destruction that followed also came the awakening of music carts, girls who embody musical themes and harness the power of the gems. Together with their conductors that guide them in battle, the music carts fight back against the D2s in an ongoing struggle. As a result, modern life is still possible, but they're now devoid of music out of fear of attracting the monsters. Our male protagonist is a conductor named Takt Asahina, a piano player utterly obsessed with music. Even knowing music can lead to death, he can't help himself after finding a piano in the middle of a town, causing a D2 attack which he and his music cart named Destiny fight against. It's a quick action-packed spectacle right out of the gate, showcasing the series' ability to mix classical music with intense combat. After how easily the fight goes down, we learn about these two characters more through their banter. Destiny's cold, monotone voice berates her maestro for running out of energy from a mid-level D2, while Tact fires back at her by claiming she fights inefficiently and uses up all his life force. Both acknowledge these problems and understand that they need to overcome these issues if they ever intend to make it to New York. It's also at this moment we meet Anna, the walking older sister trope who drives to the scene backwards in their car and yells at the both of them for causing trouble again. These comedic character moments are the backbone of what makes this show appealing to the audience, but that's not to say these character interactions are unique. Plenty of other anime structure their dialogue in the same way. It's the textbook definition of the comic trope trio, which consists of the leader, the fool, and the only sane person. Yet their cross-country road trip feels almost like a newly formed family still trying to figure things out and connect despite their differences. Tact constantly aches for music like it's a drug to him, Destiny is unaware of anything except combat and sweets, and Anna just wants the damn group to focus so they can get to the New York Symphonica. Yet the reveal of these personalities and vague explanation of their journey feels natural and engaging here. The audience doesn't need an awkward awkward exposition dump to understand how these characters know each other or what they're doing, because you can easily connect the dots and it's nice to have some kind of mystery and not have your hand held throughout the whole experience. But then the rest of the episode consists of a basic side mission. They stop by a local diner, banter in a similar fashion, then Destiny leaves to fight nearby D2s alone, she gets beat up and cartoonishly explains what happened, then they go finish the job before leaving the diner. It doesn't really expand on anything we didn't already understand from the first segment, and almost feels like a follow-up filler episode that reinforces how the show feels. It also encapsulates how the formula for each episode plays out. Here's how you make a typical episode of Tactop Destiny. The crew drives around America and banters to each other, reminding you of each character's personality quirks and desires. This can get tiring to some, but personally I don't mind it because the dialogue is always funny to me, and the car itself also feels like a member of the cast in a way, which in itself is also kind of funny. Then they stop by an area which suddenly has D2 appear after they show up. Destiny transforms and kills them. The battle looks and sounds awesome, but it's mostly just bland action spectacle in terms of the story. Doesn't really need to be there, you wouldn't really miss too much if it wasn't there. And then finally they leave, bantering off into the sunset, ready to start the loop again in the next episode. The only real difference between each episode is sometimes the places they visit are somewhat interesting, or they meet a new music cart who joins in 
on the formula for the episode. Characters don't really develop in any way, and there's not much of interest in what's going to happen next with the story. No main antagonist has been revealed either, even despite the recent episode dealing with a shady conductor with a definitely evil-looking music cart. Instead, we're just meant to wait each week for the next cool-looking fight with classical music, while fans rave about how deep and moving this show is. I struggled for a while to understand what compels someone to enjoy Tactop Destiny outside of its aesthetics. The story of a world without music and the fight to bring back that creative expression is one that I can see have impactful messages, but here this is never really explored. Music is not gone from this world by any means. People still play and listen to music in this world. Plenty of episodes showcase places which ignore the threat of D2 until our main cast appears and somehow attracts them. When you look back at the episodes, you start to realize the music doesn't feel like it has any thematic relevance outside of music heart personalities. So whatever deep meaning we're meant to grasp from its musical taboo all feel like surface level understandings of its themes. In essence, this show reminds me of Princess Connect Redive or Minaria Friends, where they look nice and have fun moments, but overall they're shows about nothing that are meant to sell mobile games. Because in case you're unfamiliar, Tactop Destiny is the first entry in a multimedia project related to an upcoming mobile game. Which means Tactop Destiny is basically a nice looking advertisement for another anime waifu gacha game. That's why each episode feels so formulaic. The player obviously is supposed to be the conductor, traveling across America, collecting music art girls on your journey to fight generic monsters and banter with other characters. And knowing this makes it difficult to imagine this anime becoming anything more than pretty packaging. Yet as I see reactions to the series, the complaints are mostly about how MAPPA episodes look worse than the Madhouse episodes, which makes me think that when people realize this story is going nowhere, they're just gonna blame it all on MAPPA, when in reality the plot was doomed from the start. And that's weird to realize because after the pilot, we get two episodes of the very beginning of the story. We meet a more cheerful and human version of Destiny named Cosette, who lives with both Tact and Anna. Tact is a recluse at this point, traumatized by an incident years ago where his father caused a deep to attack in Boston. As he grows closer with Cosette through music, he's eventually convinced to perform at a festival. Don't ask me why it's suddenly alright to perform music in public, it's something about a truce, but clearly that didn't matter, nor do I understand how you could ever have a truce with the D2. But anyways, his performance of course sparks an attack by the D2, which results in the death of Cosette, but also the awakening of Destiny, who takes over her body. After that, we meet another conductor in a shotgun-wielding, trigger-happy music card who explains the situation to them in a breakfast exposition dump and begin teaching them how things work. And so they begin their road trip to the New York Symphonica so the group can look into what's going on with Destiny. And this is about all we get for plot progression and character development in this series. Everything else is about the cool fights, banter, music, and the different music art designs. Make no mistake, all of that is good. I'm not saying Tactop Destiny is bad, only that it's just a beautiful disappointment. But that's bound to happen when you take a premise with a lot of potential and force it into a mobile game advertisement. Even with its problems though, Tactop Destiny is still one of the better shows this season. After all, you don't need a well-written story for viewers to find enjoyment and meaning. I'm sticking with it for the character designs, musical action, and fun dialogue, and there's also some time for the plot to recover, but at this point, I'm not expecting much. Hello, Future Wolfborg here to complain, because apparently, anytime I try to make reasonable requests of some things, or what I think are reasonable fucking requests, a monkey's paw curls somewhere, and I get it, but everything's all fucked. So, when I wrote and recorded this video initially, there were only six episodes of Tacked Up Destiny out. Yesterday, the seventh episode dropped, and it did a couple things I wanted, and then threw everything in the trash. So... So this new episode had a lot of really good character development stuff that was shown. It it even retroactively made the, the episode 6 that felt like a dog shit filler episode. It gave some of that kind of impact towards where the characters are developing, which was all really good up until the final segment of the episode where the comically evil looking guy who turned out to not be the main antagonist at first showed up like at episode five and then they just fucked off for an episode of filler now they suddenly came back because his superior said to leave main character guy alone so he shows up at the end and reveals that hey he's the guy who's awakening all the d2s now and the guy who looked like he was comically evil and was probably going to be evil is actually not only is he evil we're going to suddenly bring him 
him in out of nowhere, have the big reveal completely randomly, and then they're just gonna talk about how, yeah, not only are we bringing in D2s now, we're like controlling them right now, we've also been responsible for all of them been awakening, and for Kazette to have turned into Destiny because we pretty much killed her during that festival. I caused that or whatever. What the fuck is going on with this? Why are you doing this? When I ask for things to happen, I don't want those things to be dog shit, okay? It's not hard to build up a villain. It's cartoonish. He's, he's like cartoonishly evil. His music art looks awesome, but like their whole dynamic is just cartoonishly evil to the point where either I just don't believe he's going to actually be the main antagonist. I feel like something's going to happen to where in the next episode he ends up joining the, the, the good side. Because like his, his ability to awaken the D2s with his music art probably is something that the Symphonica is doing. I don't know if the Symphonica itself is going to try to be evil. I think the guy who was the higher up from him seemed like a pretty reasonable dude from what we've seen but all i know is that this is seven episodes of like probably 12 13 episode anime and we were having this dumb cartoonishly evil fucking reveal that seemed obvious even from looking at them in the op but like it it looks so dumb and predictable that you didn't think it would actually work like that and yet somehow it feels like they are doing it like that i i don't get it <laughs> i don't know oh god i you, you get what you ask for, I guess, but it doesn't always mean it's good. I, I guess I'll go fuck myself. I, why do I even bother? I don't know. Again, Tactop Destiny still looks good, still feels like a good experience, but man, the writing is fucking abysmal. I fucking hate that this is pretty much an advertiser for a mobile game, and that it ruins every potential that the story could have as a result of being that kind of production, I guess. Because there's so much potential the story could have had, and it's just being thrown in the dumpster, pissed on, and then burned. Like, it's just, it, it's such an insult to whatever the fuck they had going on. On the one hand, some people I've seen online were happy that there was at least something to look forward to in the next episode of this. On the other hand, it's so fucking predictable and cartoonish that they don't think it's gonna go anywhere, or if it does, it would be really dumb. So I don't know why any of this is happening, nor why we made this a plot point. It feels really fucking out of place dumb. I don't- oh god, oh god, it's, it's okay guys. It's okay, guys. Don't worry. It looks nice. That's all that matters, right? Anyways, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to hear more of my anime takes, you can follow me on Twitter, where I post my seasonal impressions of everything. Or you can talk to me on Discord, where we sometimes watch anime together. That's all for now. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you all later.